So, welcome back to another episode of Fate Zero. Now, in the previous episode, a bunch of things happened. So, first of all, Saber and Caster had their first meetup, and we saw that the reason why Caster was so infatuated with Saber is because he mistook her for the Holy Virgin, Jean d'Arc. And we also found out that he not only goes by the name of Bluebeard, but also by uh, Gilderay, Gilderay, um, which is, I looked it up, I looked up a bit of his story, so... Bluebeard is supposedly a fictional character that is, yeah, supposedly uh, based off of Gilderay. Um, there's no, co like, confirmation about it. He, it's not confirmed that he is b based off, him, off of him, but they, there seem to be some pretty obvious parallels. So Gilderay was a person or, like, a military officer who was fighting alongside Jean d'Arc during the Hundred Year War, and... Not only was he fighting alongside her, he was... They had a pretty, um... Trusting relationship, it seemed like, because... I'm pretty sure, during, like, some of the battles... Um... Jean d'Arc chose him and another officer to be... At her side, when she was leading the attack or whatever, right? So, she seemed to have trusted Gilderay quite a bit, uh, during the... During the war. Uh, which was really, really cool. So, they were close. Uh, and then a bunch of things happened, and he... Got... I think he got, like, embarrassed by the king, and he ended up dropping out of the military after that, and then after that, he went on a spree of doing some weirdo stuff, so he got really into, like, the occult, and he was like, let me go find someone who's, like, an alchemist and who can summon demons, I want to summon demons, and so he found, or, like, someone that he knew, he fetched, or he got someone to fetch him, someone who could summon demons, and so they found someone, they brought it to him, he was like, okay, summon some demons for me, and he failed three times, obviously, and then he was like, yeah, the reason it's failing is because we actually need some body parts of some children, and so Gilderay was like, bad, I'm gonna get some, so he went out to the store, and he got some children body parts, and they tried again, and guess what? They failed. Surprise. Um, but, yeah, um, that's how it started, and basically, he ended up, there was a rumor that some, that the children kept disappearing, there are children around them who they're kept disappearing, and eventually he ended up being the one convicted of killing over 140 children, which is sick, sickening, absolutely sickening. But let me preface that there were many historians after it, like centuries after that, that ended up speculating uh, that actually Gilderay was never, did never committed those crimes, and they were very skeptical of it, and saying that those that was just a uh, setup that was either politically or religiously um, motivated, um, so they set him up, quite possible, but either way, it's really, really fascinating, uh, that story, and he ended up, of course, getting, um, I think he get, ended up getting burnt, did he, at the cross, I think so, um, which makes sense if those were the crimes that he was charged with, but that's really, really interesting, so he, <laughs> he went from fighting um, shoulder by shoulder with uh, Jean d'Arc to basically going absolutely crazy off the rails and becoming a sociopath, if that is, uh, or just a serial killer, if that is, that story is to be believed, right? Which, such an interesting, interesting story. But yeah, either way, that's all I wanted to talk about because I find those stories really fascinating. And let's see, oh yeah, we had a bunch of things, uh, happening in the previous episode, like, um, of course, uh, Hiritsugu ended up blowing up the hotel that, uh, K was uh, staying in, so, but he ended up, I think he is still alive, obviously, uh, at least that would be my presumption, I would guess that he's still alive, it seems too easy, um, and then the main thing is, we ended up seeing Kirei and Lancer have a, or not Lancer, sorry, Archer, having, like, a pretty deep conversation about what does Kirei want to achieve with this, and I'm sure, I'm fairly certain that Kirei is gonna find some kind of motivation, in this war, that's gonna end up changing his stance in this entire, um, well, war. So, I think it's gonna be really interesting seeing how that happens. But either way, either way, let's just go into the episode, because I've been yapping for long enough. So, if you wanna watch this, Uncut and Unblurred, it's gonna be on my Patreon, which is down in the description. And without further ado, let's go into Fate Zero, Episode 7. Oh, so what happened with Maya? Oh, is this the hotel? Whoa, I'm guessing K is in here.
Oh, oh, bad idea. What the hell is that? Interesting. あ、そう。キャスターのマスターは昨今の冬騎士を探せている連続誘拐事件の犯人であることが判明した。トクレイス氏として追加の名誉を起動する。さて、質問があるものは今この場で申し出るがいい。もっとも神号発音できるものの身に限らせてもらうからね。お見事でした、神父。これでマスターたちは狐狩りに興じることになるでしょう。教会に集まった使い物は5体。ああ、ファミリアルス。つまり、つまり、生死不明であったロードエルメロに生
貴様世の波動に異を唱えると申すか波動とお前のズボンとは一体なさい金輪際全くもって関係ない外を遊び歩く三段なんとする前に敵のサーバントの一人でも撃ち取ってみろそしたらズボンでも何でも勝ってやるなるほどはい分かったとりあえず敵の見印を上げさえすればその時は世にズボンを吐かすと誓うわけだなそのせいでサーバントのような自然例以外の存在は。I wonder, I wonder how powerful the command spell actually is. Because what I mean by that is, I wonder if, let's say you give it an, you give them an, like, impossible task to your servant. Will the command spell just not work in that case? Or, and will it consume it? Or will the servant just try to do that impossible task until the end of time, until you cancel it? So let's say you say, Um, or not even an impossible, but like a very ambiguous task. Let's say you just tell him, kill Caster, go and kill Caster. So will he be forced to search for Caster until he finds him and eventually kills him? Or until Caster gets killed by someone else? Or will it, will it not work because there's not enough information? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> Maya is alive. Man managed to safely go get away. Actually, that's a pretty good. Yeah, that's a good indication of whether or not he's alive or not. That's cool. Question. Question. I don't know how strong Iris' um, healing power is, but okay. Let's say her she has a, like really strong healing powers. What if they just lop off Saber's arm and then regrow? I don't know. That's why I'm saying I don't know if her healing powers are strong enough to regrow a limb. But if there is uh, that kind of healing power, what if they lop? Hypothetically speaking, what if they were to lop off her arm and then regrow the arm? Would that work? Would that get rid of the curse or nah? I don't know how it works. Ah, uh, that's not good. Cool. 
Uh, I, I don't like this. I feel like they, they're losing their um, advantage of getting along with the servant. Because I feel like that's a huge advantage. Because it saves you so many command spells. I don't know how to feel about Kiritsuga. You... I don't like the, the way you say this. That's why he was there. Okay, first of all, before we get into this attack, uh, this would be such a goated scene, and I would f love Kiritsugu so much more if the thing with Maya didn't happen in the hotel room. If he didn't have, like, something going on there, I would love Kiritsugu in this moment. I would be like, yo, you pop off, King. But I feel so weird about that. And also, does Irene know about what's happening between them? The way she said, and you also have Maya, I don't know if she meant it just, like, you have, like, she's reliable and you can um, rely on her. Or if she actually knows there's more happening with her and him. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about Kiritsuga. Because I can't really forgive cheating, but I'm gonna see what happens. I don't want to assume. Oh my god! Gildare. Oh no, this feels like a trap! Oh, 
And uh, in the previous episode, I also said that, um, you know how she's called the Holy Virgin? Virgin was used as a title back then. And I checked, I looked it up, and yes, that is true. Uh, Virgin was, uh, like, she was, uh, Jean was referred to as a Holy Virgin, and Virgin being the title, which meant, like, a, um, like, a blessed, like, a sage when it comes to, like, a religious term, right? Someone who's, like, um, on a higher plane uh, when it comes to, like, spirituality. Uh, in the, like the Orthodox and the Christian um, church, it kind of meant like, yeah, someone who's like blessed and stuff like that. That's what uh, the title virgin meant. Um, also, it meant lit it literally a virgin as well, yes. I know I'm pausing a lot, but uh, yeah, apparently they did uh, also physically check that uh, she was a virgin when she joined the army, I believe. Uh, that was... I, I read that paragraph in Wikipedia and was like, whoa, that's that's cool. That's an interesting detail. Oh. He was bugged. Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. Mm. She's so cool. I'm really interested in seeing what her noble phantasm actually is, because I'm guessing it's Excalibur, but I wonder what exactly it means. It's gonna be cool. Necronomicon? Oh! Prelati! Oh! Uh, Prelati is the person who... That, yes, is the alchemist who uh, Gildere was working together with to summon the demons. He was the one who was brought to Gildere as like, oh, this guy can summon demons for you. And then they tried multiple times and he was like, I need some children body parts, and Gildare went out to get them. That's cool. Prelati. Yes, that's it. That's cool. I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Oh shit. Oh, the OSD. So cool. Is it Yuki Kajira? I think so. Lancer. Yo, could you leave the curse? Say, Alain, sir, please. 
Kiritsugu is so smart. I kind of like this guy. He feels like he's an asshole just for the sake of being an asshole. I kind of, I kind of respect that. I respect how much of a hater he is. That's cool. He has like uh, Gara's ultimate defense or whatever it is. That's cool. Oh, is it Mercury? It is, right? That's what I said earlier. Yo! <laughs> Look at the aura! Whoa! Shadow step! A reality marble. Condition. What did he do to him? That's cool! Here it is! What? No! I, 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 I. That's it! Wow, what a banger of an episode, once again, oh my god, man. Okay, so Lancer and Saber are reunited now and fighting against 
uh, Caster, which is gonna be cool. I mean, it's just really cool seeing Caster actually do stuff. So I guess he's a necromancer. Uh, so he basically fights with summons. He doesn't. I'm guessing he doesn't do that much of his own offensive magic, um, which is interesting. Uh, and his noble phantasm is the uh, what's it called? Uh, necro. The Necronomicon? Is that it? Um, so I'm guessing that's his uh, noble phantasm. Or like the demon summoning book or whatever. And does it give him like infinite mana or something? I don't know. But that's cool. Um, and then obviously Airi and Maya ran away. And now Kiritsugu and Kainith are locked in a battle. So I wonder what the other servants are going to end up doing as well. Because there are still many that we aren't seeing yet. So it's going to be cool. Uh, I want to see who Berserker ends up being. And I really like the callback from Lancer being like 100. That's not a big, that big of a number because we know that in the legend, uh, Lancer, or I forgot his actual name, but um, he, we know that he took down like over 3,000 people in a fight, which <laughs> that's su such a nice nod back to the legend. But yeah, either way, this was really, really cool. I always enjoy uh, reading up on these characters, these historical figures. Um, I feel like it's so much... So interesting, you know, just knowing about these guys and every time that I end an episode of this and I can go on Wikipedia and check out some facts about these characters is actually so much fun. Um, so I feel like this is going to be so cool. So I want to see how this ends up going from here on out, but I'm going to end this one here. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.